be a registry or a control circuit or any other electronic circuit. This may result into memory corruption, but since the component is not uh, hardly or severely damaged, uh, the software may continue running smoothly until it reads from the part of the memory that was corrupted. So, evaluation of commonly used CPU relief that half of transient faults may cause calculation error or program crashes. So, either the circuit or this program must be protected. In my research, we choose to protect the program, and precisely the program we are talking about here is the operating system. And the approach we choose is to control the operating system execution through a virtual machine. This leads to this architecture where we have a hypervisor running directly uh, on the hardware and allow, allow us to control the guest OS. The hypervisor we are using is the combination of Nova and the Gnode uh, software with the use of virtual bus to control the operating system as, in execution in guest or as guest machine. The general approach is to rely on existing hardware detection and recovery mechanism like machine check architecture, memory protection facilities, error correcting code, and errors which may remain undetected by hardware mechanisms We rely on double execution with comparison of short processing elements, which last at most 200 microseconds and are executed atomically. The problem now here is how we handle the coherency of the system and the performance impact while we are executing redundantly the sequence of instructions and in the presence of external interrupts, which are asynchronous events. The software to be protected here is divided at runtime in short processing elements. Uh, a processing element is as we said, a sequence of process CPU instructions that are delimited by either a maximum number of instructions. We, we detect this by using, by triggering the performance monitoring interrupt. The processing element may also be delimited by system call, a CPU exception like page fault, general production fault, or tax state segment errors, this kind of exception. Also, we stop the processing element when there is input output instruction or a process switch. And later, we'll also rely on virtual machine exit to stop the processing element. So, all these events trigger processing element stop so that we can re execute them, compare the two execution, and detect if there are uh, transient faults or not. Okay, so concerning the external interrupts, we distinguish two classes of external interrupts. The first class is performance monitoring, monitoring interrupts. This interrupt is used by the hardening model to stop the processing element when a specific number of instruction is executed by the CPU. And this interrupt has to be handled immediately. The second class is all the other inter external interrupts. These interrupts cannot be part of the processing element. The handling is delayed when they arrive. If they arrive, if they are triggered, we queue them so they are queued for the first servicing until the processing element is finished. So when they arrive, we unqueue them, we execute end of interrupt, and after committing the current processing elements, we dequeue all recorded interrupts in first in, first out order. So a special care must be taken when doing this, a special care must be taken regarding real-time processing. If the interrupt requires immediate servicing or 
it, it, it is proved not influencing the processing element hidden potency. We can we may service it directly or immediately, but if it cannot satisfy this criteria, uh, criteria we face this uh, in this way. We face a that case where we cannot handle this kind of interact now. So we test this approach on um, this approach on genome system with its microkernel nova, and the, during during the booting phase which lasts uh, about uh, 600 CPU gigacycles, approximately four minutes, with no idle loop. We notice that 99% of all timer interrupts are de uh, delayed, whereas all other interrupts, with, all, so with also all other interrupts. So it is the busy time and all interrupts that uh, were triggered during this uh, booting phases are delayed. But especially timer interrupts were delayed with an uh, average 18 microseconds. All other interrupts, like keyboard or other global system interrupts, were delayed with about 40 to 50 microseconds in average. So this was the case when the system was booting. When the system, after the system boot completely, we let the system run with idle user and uh, the overall result was that only 20% of timer interrupts were delayed, whereas none of the other interrupts were delayed. So this is, this is quite optimist, optimistic about uh, performance in, with dual execution of processing elements because uh, the current implementation is largely improvable, and all the system after it's finished will run in uh, uh, in a after booting phase completed. So, in conclusion, we may say that when executing redundantly sequence of instruction of piece of software. Interrupt management is a key aspect to performance. Here we, show, we choose to delay the servicing to ensure that the two execution are the same. We investigate how interrupt delaying performance impacts on the system, and we found that in general, this will not impede the operating system dual execution in normal execution. So, that's the conclusion we fall in, and that's also the end of our presentation. Thank you for your kind attention. Any question or suggestion, uh, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so we may have some questions here. Yeah. So it sounds okay. like processing element might be restricted to something that executes on a uniprocessor system. How does this work, or does this even work in the presence of concurrency on an SMP system? Uh, uh, I don't get you. I don't hear you correctly. Yeah, uh, yeah. maybe <laughs> yeah. It's, it's a large question. <laughs> maybe it's better if we... Okay, uh, can you hear me? Yeah, yeah, I hear you. Yeah. Okay, it, it sounds to me as if uh, you are processing element is a unit that only works on a single processor system because it's yeah, yeah. that's right right it doesn't work on SMP. it, it doesn't uh, work I didn't get the end of the question yeah the, the question is coming <laughs> no okay. the, the question is does the, the split of the program into processing elements work on an SMP system where you have concurrency also due to other processors not just the work uh, I suggest we write the question because uh, it, the sound is not correct here. Okay, it's, it's too hard. Um, maybe the, the question was? Uh, is the, if this is working for SMP systems. Yeah. Is, is your concept working for SMP uh, systems? Is the question. Ah, okay. So uh, right now it's not uh, already running as an SMP processor. 
we do not uh, consider uh, multi flooding now. So this will be a part of future work. So now all consideration about multi processor are left for future investigation. Okay. Did you get me? Yeah, yeah, we are. Okay, have a question? Okay. Yeah. Thank you. I think it's highly dangerous to delay an interrupt um, until after the instructions have elapsed because in the worst case you have a sequence of instructions where you have interrupts disabled, then you have a small window of say 20 instructions where interrupts are enabled, and then you disable them again. And if sort of that region falls completely into a PE block, you will never be able to interact with it. Okay, can you shorten this question? Maybe you come in front and, and talk directly. Yeah, maybe he sent you an email. It's another large question. <laughs> okay, other questions? Okay. Seems not to be the case. So you two get in contact. Maybe. Okay. And yeah, thank you. Thank you too. And we'll see you next time. So. So see you later. See you later. Thank you.